MagnaCut sucks. MagnaCut's awesome. Eh, I think MagnaCut's really just a hype steal. If you've been anywhere around the knife community since 2021, you may have heard many of these statements being made about a new steal to the knife community called MagnaCut. And today, we're going to get to the bottom of what MagnaCut is, how good is it, and what knives should you look for in this steal. Let's check it out. How's it going, everybody? If you're new here, welcome in. And if you've been here before, welcome back. I'm Roll Chambeau, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And today we're getting to the bottom of Magna Cut, a knife steel that has been talked about and talked about and talked about. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Some people think that it's just a hype machine. But we did our research so that we could bring you another episode of Steel Snobs, the series where I attempt to break down, in layman's terms, the intricacies of what makes knife steels awesome or not awesome. We're here to make it something that's easy to understand. To start off, a little brief recent history on MagnaCut. MagnaCut is a new stainless steel that was invented in 2021 by our very own Dr. Laren Thomas, someone who I greatly respect and believe is quite possibly the first and foremost authority when it comes to knife steels in the modern day knife community. It's quite possible that Laren has done more for unveiling the secrecy behind what makes knife steels so special than just about anybody in modern history. Chris Reeve being a close second. It's important to note that initially Laren wanted to create a knife steel that was very similar to CPM Crewwear and CPM 4V as far as its performance. You see, he saw that the stainless steels with high edge retention was actually quite crowded as far as availability goes. You have S90V, you have M390, you have S. 30 VN, there's a lot of options. So he wanted something that had decent edge retention, decent stainless properties, and decent toughness. And if you know anything about knife steels, you know that oftentimes it's hard to get all three because, for example, when you have higher edge retention, you typically have lower toughness and vice versa. And on top of that, the corrosion resistance also plays a role since typically speaking, elements like chromium and vanadium, which are typically used in stainless steel, also tend to make the steel less hard. The harder the steel, the more edge retention you have, the more edge retention you have, the lower the toughness. So on and so forth the story goes. So Laren started off by taking his findings and taking his research on his new steel to an unnamed, unknown small batch research company known for making small batches of powder metallurgy steel. When he found out what the cost would be to produce a mere 50 pounds of his test steel, he decided that it wasn't worth it because it was simply way too much money. He then decided that the best route to go would be to approach a steel company and see if he could get them to latch on to his new steel. CPM MagnaCut is now made by Crucible Industries, but it didn't stop there. He brought his idea to the table. He talked to their top metallurgist at that company because they wanted to make sure that he wasn't just some fly-by-night metallurgist looking to get his rocks off with some new steel. So how did he achieve what he was setting out to do? How did he make his goals a reality? It comes down to two elements in particular. He found that stainless steels usually have a higher amount of chromium than they actually need to retain their stainlessness. This is important because chromium often forms carbides which are softer in nature and naturally resist hardening. He also marginally increased something called niobium. Niobium is responsible for making knives a lot harder and in many cases also increases the wear resistance also known as 
edge retention. After many sleepless nights and months of research, he believed that he had found the sweet spot and the rest is history. We have seen MagnaCut on many, many knives. Some people love it, some people hate it. Some people just plain think that it's overrated and not necessarily all that good. But when we dig into its properties and its performance in the three categories that matter the most, in toughness, in edge retention, and corrosion resistance, what exactly does it score? For toughness, MagnaCut scores a 7, for edge retention a 5, and for corrosion resistance a 9.5. Now, on the outset, most people do claim that edge retention is, in fact, their most desired knife steel property. So, with a rating of 5 for edge retention, which matches CPM Crewwear and CPM 4V, and oh yeah, D2, it doesn't necessarily seem that impressive from the outset. However, when cut tested by a popular channel on YouTube called Cedric and Ada, what they found was that the Spyderco mule team in MagnaCut, heat treated to a Rockwell of 62 HRC, it actually performed very similar to Maximet, which is a knife steel highly known for its wear resistance and edge retention. However, something that Maximet is not known for is its toughness. So how did they achieve that? And why does Dr. Laren Thomas's own knife steel rating say that it should perform more like D2 and less like Maximit when in fact the test that we do have available says otherwise? It comes down to the Rockwell hardness. Now, typically speaking on release, you will see that many of the first knives in MagnaCut were heat treated somewhere in the realm of 59 to 61 HRC. Whereas the Spyderco Mule Team MagnaCut knife was actually heat treated to 62 HRC. Something else that has to be taken into consideration is the edge and blade geometry of the knives being used. Something that Laren has mentioned before on video, on record, is that the blade geometry is in fact more important than the knife steel properties when it comes to edge retention. Now with all of that being said, it wasn't until later that we found out that in fact MagnaCut has far greater edge retention than D2 or CPM 4V or CPM Crewwear once it reaches that 62 plus HRC range. But just going off of what we have on his own website, how well does it stack up against other super steels? If we were to look at steels like 10V, 15V, S30V, if we were to look at M390 or Rex 121 or my personal favorite S90V, you'd actually find that it has the least amount of reported edge retention out of all of the aforementioned steels. However, what it does have going for it is the fact that it has the highest combination of toughness, edge retention, and corrosion resistance. With all of those other steels, there's always a sacrifice being made somewhere. For example, Rex 121 has amazing edge retention, arguably the best edge retention out of any knife steel currently known to the market. However, its weak point is in fact its toughness and oh yeah, it's also not necessarily that corrosion resistant. The same goes for Maximin. In fact, the only steel that I think really competes with MagnaCut when it comes to having a even playing field across the board is S90V and even S90V doesn't necessarily have that great of toughness. However, what S90V does have is a typical heat treat of 59 to 61, which is why it's such a great steel to use in knives, because that's usually what knife manufacturers aim for when they go to heat treat a knife steel. So now that we have established what we need to get better edge retention out of MagnaCut, the question is, what knives should you look at if you want to get that super premium edge retention at 62 plus? What brands should you trust? What brands should you avoid? I'm going to go ahead and pop them up on the screen, and while I do that, I want you to head down to the comment section below and let me know exactly what you're surprised about. 
Are the brands that I'm recommending a surprise or are the ones that I'm telling you to stay away from even a bigger shock? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you've watched to this point so far and find this information fascinating like I do, make sure you smack that subscribe button. So this is the fun part and often the part that many people have requested from me after my prior steel snobs videos. Which knives should I get in this steel? Which knives should I avoid in this steel? Well, based on my research, the knives that you should definitely check out in MagnaCut include knives from Kershaw like the Dividend, knives from Hogue like the Deca, knives from Tactile Knife Company, uh, knives like the Protec Mordax, or actually any Benchmade knives in MagnaCut. These are all knives and knife companies who have reported Rockwell hardness for their Magna Cut somewhere in the realm of 63 to 65. So if you want that super premium edge retention, those are the ones that you want to stick with. If you know of others, make sure to include that in your comment. Now on to the really juicy bit. Which companies should you avoid? I'm going to start this by saying you should probably avoid any knives in Magna Cut if you're buying the knife purely for the knife steel if they don't list what the Rockwell hardness is. These companies include Microtech. Love Them Knives channel actually had a PM test performed on a new Microtech Ultratech in MagnaCut and it came back at a very unsatisfying 61.5. Other knife companies to avoid include popularized Italian companies like Viper Knives and MKM, also known as Maniago Knife Makers. These Italian companies are known for softer heat treats, especially on MagnaCut, but also including steels like M390 and 20CV. Other knife companies that do not include these HRC ratings include Best Tech as well as PMP Knives. Because they don't list it, I have a really hard time trusting it. And then finally on our list to avoid would be Boker. Boker has advertised that they do their heat treat for MagnaCut between 59 and 60. And if you're listening to this part specifically to find out which companies are doing it the best, those are in fact the ones that I would avoid. Now, there are a few honorable mentions. The first one is going to be Chris Reeve. Now, if you go to Chris Reeve website for chrisreevenives.com, you will find that they advertise their HRC for MagnaCut between 63 and 65, which is, sounds amazing. However, if you do more research, you'll find that there's evidence that they did have some batches that came back between 59 and 61. So it makes them kind of hard to trust. Most likely what happened was they came out with an initial batch release of knives in MagnaCut at that 59 to 61, found out what the community actually wanted in a higher Rockwell hardness knife, and then proceeded to start making knives in MagnaCut at that higher Rockwell hardness. Because Chris Reeve knives are so back ordered, it's hard to tell which batch you're going to get if you order one in MagnaCut. So to play it safe, they will in fact get an honorable mention because at this point in time, we really don't know which one you will get. Will it be 60 HRC? Will it be 63 HRC? Who knows? The other honorable mention is going to be Spyderco. While all the companies that I mentioned in the recommended section included knives that had 63 plus, Spyderco has been recently tested at having two knives, one at 62.5, the other at 62.8. So unfortunately, while they don't quite make the cut for that 63 sweet spot that we're looking for, like Hogue does, they do in fact have a number that's closer to 63 than 62, and you probably shouldn't see any issues with that, especially once we take in Cedric and Ada's cut test. So while I won't list them in the recommended, and I definitely won't list them in the not recommended, I will, of course, give them an honorable mention, and I don't think you can ever go wrong with a Spyderco heat treat. Let me know in the comment section down below, did these lists surprise you? Are you going to check out some of these knives that I've recommended? If not, why not? Definitely let me know. Back to the rest of the episode. In conclusion, I've summarized that MagnaCut is in fact not an overhype steel and in fact it does not suck. As with most steels, it really comes down to the heat treat. What should that HRC be at? 
Is it good enough if it's at 62? Do we really need it to be at 63 plus? Only you can make that decision for yourself as to whether or not you really care about that. Should we in fact be caring more about the edge and blade geometry of our knives to really get the most out of our edge retention? It is in fact something that you should consider when you go to buy your next knife. For me, my favorite knife steel today remains S90V because even though it does not have as good of toughness as MagnaCut, making it marginally less versatile, I find that in folding knives specifically, you don't necessarily need all of that toughness because you're not going to be using your folding knife to chop down trees. And by the way, if you want to check out more information about S90V, my favorite knife steel, and also Dr. Laren Thomas's favorite knife steel, aside from MagnaCut, make sure to click on the video that pops up next.